Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. Today we'll be learning how a bottle jack works. So if you've ever been curious about this handy tool, you've come to the right place. Let's get started. Before we jump into the inner workings of a bottle jack, let's first look at the key components involved. A bottle jack is a hydraulic lifting device designed to raise heavy loads. It consists of a cylinder-shaped body, hence the name bottle jack, which houses the hydraulic system. The bottle jack has a large base, providing stability when in use. This is the handle. By pumping the handle up and down, you apply pressure to the hydraulic system, causing the main piston to rise, gradually lifting the load. This is the saddle. It's mounted on top of the main piston and directly contacts the load being lifted. The saddle may have textured or grooved surfaces to improve grip and stability. It provides a secure point of contact between the jack and the load. On certain models of bottle jacks, the saddle may be threaded. By rotating the saddle manually, it can be adjusted vertically, allowing for fine tuning of the height when necessary. This is the release valve. To safely lower the load, a bottle jack is equipped with a release valve. By turning the valve, you can gradually release the pressure in the hydraulic system, allowing the load to descend in a controlled manner. We'll take a look at the release valve in more detail later in this video. Now let's take a closer look inside the bottle jack. This is the oil reservoir, filled with hydraulic oil, which acts as a working fluid for the system. It's important to ensure the reservoir is adequately filled for proper operation. The hydraulic oil within the reservoir is not pressurized. This is the oil plug. The oil reservoir is typically filled to the lower rim of the oil plug hole. This is the pump cylinder and piston. This is where the hydraulic fluid gets pressurized. The handle is inserted into the handle bracket, which is directly connected to the pump piston. When you pump the handle, you basically operate the pump piston. Next, we have the main cylinder and piston. The hydraulic oil coming into the main cylinder is pressurized, pushing the main piston up and lifting the load. Both pistons have a seal around them, ensuring a tight fit within the cylinders. The seals prevent any fluids from leaking out, maintaining the pressure necessary for lifting heavy objects. Finally, we have the ball check valves. They allow the hydraulic fluid to flow in one direction and prevent it from reversing flow in the opposite direction, ensuring that the load remains lifted, even when the pumping action stops. The valve operates based on the pressure differential between the input and output sides. We have a two ball check valve in the bottle jack, one for the pump cylinder and one for the main cylinder. A ball check valve typically uses a spring-loaded or free-floating ball that rests on the ceiling seat to close the valve orifice. The check valve in today's example is using a free-floating ball. The valve seat is conically tapered to properly guide the ball, providing a positive seal and preventing backflow. When the oil pressure from the inlet sides exceeds the pressure from the outlet side, the ball is dislodged from its seat, allowing fluid to flow through. When the outlet pressure exceeds the inlet pressure, the ball closes with the back pressure or with the spring, effectively closing the orifice. A free-floating ball check valve requires a reverse flow or gravity to move the ball against the seat to seal it. Let's now understand the bottle jack working's principles. A bottle jack operates in two principles. The first principle is the law of the lever. A lever amplifies an input force to provide a greater output force, equaling the ratio of the output force to the input force. There are three classes of lever depending on the location of the load and effort with respect to the fulcrum, also called the pivot point. A bottle jack uses a class 2 lever, where the load is located between the effort and the fulcrum. The movement of the load is in the same direction as that of the effort. If, for example, the lever arm from the fulcrum to the input force is 10 times larger than the lever arm from the fulcrum to the pump piston, then the input force will be increased by a factor of 10. The second principle is Pascal's law. Exerting a small force on the pump piston which have a small cross-section area will generate a pressure in the fluid. According to Pascal's law, a change in pressure applied to a fluid in an enclosed system will be evenly distributed throughout the fluid and transmitted everywhere in the system. 
Therefore, the pressure generated by the pump piston also acts on the second main piston. However, the main piston has a larger surface area. Increasing the surface area leads to a larger force. For example, if the surface area of the main piston is three times larger than the area of the pump piston, the force applied on the main piston will be three times as much as the force applied on the pump piston. But to respect the law of conservation of energy, the displacement of the main cylinder will be three times less than the pump cylinder. Now let's see how the battle jack works. In its initial position, the main piston is fully retracted into the cylinder and the release valve is closed. As you pump the handle, when the pump piston moves up, the hydraulic oil is sucked from the oil reservoir to the pump cylinder through an inlet passage. Just before entering the pump cylinder, the fluid lifts the steel ball, allowing the fluid to pass through it freely. As the pump piston subsequently moves down, it pressurizes the hydraulic oil, pushing the steel ball down against its seat, closing off the pathway back to the oil reservoir and forcing the hydraulic oil through the second passage towards the main cylinder. Simultaneously, the steel ball in the main cylinder is lifted by the incoming pressurized oil, allowing the fluid to flow in. As the hydraulic fluid enters the main cylinder, it pushes against the piston, causing it to rise. The piston's upward movement transfers the force to the object being lifted, allowing you to raise heavy loads with relative ease. When the piston moving downward reaches the end of its stroke, gravity causes the ball in the main cylinder to close and the pressurized oil keeps it shut, preventing hydraulic oil from flowing back into the pump cylinder. The pumping process can now be repeated until you reach the desired height. The more you pump the handle, the longer the piston extends, allowing greater lifting height. Finally, when you're done lifting and you want to lower the load, you can slowly turn the release valve stem counterclockwise typically using the handle as a tool. This action opens the valve, allowing the pressurized hydraulic fluid to flow from the main cylinder back into the oil reservoir, gradually releasing the pressure in the system. As a result, the piston descends and the object is safely lowered. Once the load has been safely lowered, it is important to close the release valve by turning the valve stem clockwise. Some battle jacks are equipped with a safety valve to protect it from damage by releasing access pressure when the load exceeds the jack's capacity. In this example, the release valve is also designed as a safety valve by having a spring in contact with the ball. The spring maintains constant pressure on the ball, holding it against the valve seat to prevent hydraulic fluid from escaping under normal conditions. When the hydraulic pressure inside the main cylinder reaches the predetermined level, it overcomes the force of the spring, pushing the ball away from the valve seat allowing hydraulic fluid to flow back into the reservoir. Once the overpressure is relieved, the valve resets. I hope you found this video informative and interesting. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe.